say to me, son, stop fighting the fight. It's already been won. And I am redeemed. You set me. The Bible is a book of covenants and God is relational and he wants to have relationship with us. He's so serious about that relationship with you and me that he establishes it as a covenant. Meaning this is a solemn oath because God is very serious about relationship. And he keeps this covenant for a thousand generations. Meaning, look, this is a covenant that he's going to keep it. He's going to stand by this through time. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. As always, it's our joy, our delight to come your way and spend this time with you. Uh, in the Word of God and uh, also pray with you. One of the things we'd like to encourage you to do is uh, stay tuned with us as we go through the weeks. Uh, if possible, uh, I would encourage you uh, to form a little Bible study group around the uh, weekly teachings that come your way. Uh, you could, depending on what day of the week and what time the program comes into your area, 
would encourage you to get a few people together, spend some time, maybe meet 30 minutes before the program starts, spend some time in prayer and worship, and then uh, listen to the teaching of the Word of God, pray together, and then discuss what you have heard on the telecast, and uh, examine the Word of God together, study around uh, the teaching that you've received, and build each other up. And if you could do this week after week, it'll help you not only build a small Bible study group and build a little community, but also grow together in the Word of God. So think about it. Think if you can get a few friends together and and do this. Uh, uh, Form a little Bible study group and study God's Word together as we come your way week after week through these telecasts. Now, if you're not able to stay tuned with us uh, every week, the other option is also to get onto our church website and all our television programs right from the very beginning are available there. Our Sunday sermons are available there and you could uh, watch the programs on demand at any time you'd like to at your convenience. And there again, you could form a little Bible study group around the weekly telecasts that, that are available. Study the Word of God together and grow together in your faith and by encouraging one another. Over the last few weeks, we've been talking about covenant. We've been talking about uh, what the Bible teaches us about our covenant with God. And we've covered uh, a fair amount of ground uh, as far as establishing our understanding of the covenant. Uh, We've talked about the blood covenant, what it means, the significance of it. We also said that the purpose of the covenant is relationship. The reason God establishes covenant with us is because He's actually pursuing a relationship with us, and He's inviting us into a relationship with God, a relationship that will eventually end in or will lead to fellowship, intimacy, and friendship. That's what God really wants, uh, is desiring. He wants us to come to that kind of relationship that is close, that is like a friend, uh, that that is intimate, where He shares His heart with us, and we are able to bear our hearts open before God. And that's God's purpose in setting up this covenant relationship with us. As we continue studying on covenant in the scriptures, I want to talk to us on the program today on people of the covenant. What we want to do is just look through the Old Testament and see how being in covenant with God affected the day-to-day life of God's covenant people. What did it mean to them? What did it matter to them in everyday life, in, in the situations they faced, and the challenges they faced, and, and just day-to-day things of life. How did being in covenant with God affect uh, them on a day-to-day basis? And we're going to look at the Old Testament. Now, I understand that we, uh, as New Testament believers, we are in a new covenant with God, which is different, and we are also living our times in which we live are different, uh, and all of that. But the objective here in looking at the Old Testament and trying to draw some lessons is to, to understand that these are the kinds of things uh, that are possible when we walk in covenant with God. So the Old Testament survey will open this up to us. Now, of course, on the telecast, we will not be able to uh, complete or do a thorough study of uh, everything that we find uh, in the Old Testament, but I want to just bring out some key highlights, some things that will uh, bear upon us that being in covenant with God does affect our daily life and how we go about uh, living in our day-to-day way of life. Now, let's begin with Exodus, the 19th chapter, the fifth verse. God speaks to His people. He says, Therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people for all the earth is mine. So God says, look, when you come into this covenant relationship with me, I'm going to treat you as a special treasure, a special people to me. I'm going to treat you in a very different way because you are in covenant with God. And God says, I'm the Lord of all the earth. Everything in the earth is mine. Everything in the earth is what I created. But for those who are in covenant with me, I treat you as a special treasure. Meaning God says, you know, I'm going to single you out. I'm going to treat you differently. Even though everything else is mine, you are going to be a special treasure above everything else that's on the earth. This is what God told his people. And he repeats something similar in Exodus, the 34th chapter, the 10th verse. He says, behold, I make a covenant before all your people. I will do marvels such as have not been done in all the earth. 
nor in any nation, and all the people among whom you are shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. So God is telling his people once again here, because you are in covenant with me, I'm going to work in, in and among you in a very special way, in a very different way. And people are going to see it. People are going to notice it, that there is something different about you as a people, as a community, because I am going to do awesome things amongst you. So uh, at the very outset, we understand that God is going to treat people who are in covenant with him. He's going to treat them different. He's going to uh, uh, do wonders in their lives and through their lives. He offers to do this because they are in covenant with him. How did this affect them in their day-to-day -day life? First of all, we see that God drew a distinction between his people and the nations around them. Uh, a classic example is that of what happened in Egypt when Moses was about getting ready to uh, bring God's people out of slavery in Egypt. Uh, we find that as Moses goes up before Pharaoh and uh, various um, plagues and judgments of God are poured out upon Egypt in order to let Pharaoh, uh, in order to move upon Pharaoh and let the, God's people go. And you have several different judgments being poured out. Yet, God's people are not affected. And I'll just read maybe one or two passages, and you find several of this in the book of Exodus. In Exodus chapter 8 and verses 21 to 23, it records this, Or else, if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and your servants and on your people and into your houses. The houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also on the ground on which they stand. And in that day, I will set apart the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, in order that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the land. I will make a difference between my people and your people. Tomorrow this sign shall be. So God is saying, when I am judging Egypt, I'm going to protect my people. I will make a distinction. I will make a difference. And so you see, in all the other judgments that came upon Egypt, the people of Israel, God's people were not affected. And, and, and Pharaoh could see and the people of Egypt could see that there was a difference in what was happening amongst them and with the, in the land in which uh, the Hebrews or the Israelites lived. So God drew a distinction. He treated them different. God also told his people that uh, they are a special people, that are a special treasure to, to him. And one of the ways he expressed this for them is by just promising the blessings of the covenant over every area of their lives. We read about this in the 28th chapter in Deuteronomy, verses 1 to 14, where Moses enumerates the various blessings God promises his covenant people. He says, if you will uh, diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. God is going to do something very powerful in your life, in, in you as a nation. If you follow God, if you follow the voice of the Lord your God, verse 2, he says, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. And then he goes on to pronounce blessings on every area of their lives. He says, you'll be blessed in the city, you'll be blessed in the country, the fruit of your body will be blessed, or the produce of your ground will be blessed. Your livestock, are your cattle, your flocks, they will be blessed. Uh, verse 5 says you'll, you'll be blessed in your basket, in your store, and everything that you have at home to eat. You'll be blessed coming in. You'll be blessed going out. Verse 7 talks about them having a success over their enemies who come out against them. And he says in verse 8 that the Lord will command his blessing in all that you set your hand to. In all of your labor, you will see the blessing of God. And and, and God will set, uh, will set you above all the peoples of the earth. And he says God will make you plenteous in goods. So essentially what God is saying is this. Because you are in covenant with me, and if you just walk in line with the covenant, I'm going to bless every area of your life. Your everyday life is going to see God's goodness and God's blessing manifest uh, in whatever you do, in your livestock, in your children, uh, in everything, you will see the blessings of God. And it's very interesting when we come to the time of Jesus. So this is 
uh, a, a couple of thousand years since the giving of the covenant from Abraham on uh, and Moses, the covenant that was given to the people of Israel through Moses and so on. When you come to the time of Jesus, of course, they are still living under that covenant. Uh, they recognize that they are uh, in covenant with God through Abraham and through what God had uh, spoken through Moses, the Ten Commandments and so on. So they understand that. And when Jesus comes to minister to the people, he awakens them to certain things about the covenant. For instance, we find Jesus ministering healing to a woman uh, who had been bent over for 18 years. That means she'd been suffering from some sort of an ailment in her back, a back problem, and she'd been in that condition for 18 years. And Jesus addresses that situation by saying, Ought not this woman, who was a daughter of Abraham, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? So he says, you know, here's a woman. She's a daughter of Abraham. She's a woman in covenant. And the covenant of God will affect her physical health. And she has a right to be made whole. And, uh, and, and Jesus uh, calls her condition a work of the devil. He says, Satan has bound her these 18 years. And then Jesus destroys that. He says, woman, you're loosed from your infirmity. And, and she, she is healed. But what we see there is that the Lord Jesus himself is indicating to us that the covenant that God had with his people provided physical healing, provided deliverance for them, which they could take advantage of, which they could uh, receive for them. Uh, another example we see uh, as Jesus ministered uh, was in the case of the Canaanite woman. And when I mean, she came to Jesus and she wanted deliverance for her daughter, who was uh, very troubled by the evil spirits, and she comes to Jesus, and Jesus says, you know, I can't take the children's bread and give it out to the Gentiles. So he's talking about healing. He's talking about deliverance as the children's bread, meaning here are the God's people. They are in covenant with God. They are children of the covenant. They are people of the covenant, and therefore they have the right uh, of access. They have this. They have the children's bread, which is healing, which is deliverance, and I can't take what God has promised to them because they are, in, they are in covenant with God. I can't take what is theirs and then just give it away to the Gentiles, to those who are not in covenant. And yet this Canaanite woman, who is a Gentile, dares to cross that line and says, but Lord, I just want a crumb that falls from the table, just a little crumb, meaning she acknowledges that she's a Gentile, but by faith she reaches out, she taps into the mercy of God and says, I just want a little crumb. The point I want us to get here is this. Because they were people of covenant, they had the privilege of eating of the children's bread, which included physical healing, which included deliverance, and they could avail it at any time. God had already made it available. He had already offered it as part of the covenant, and as people of the covenant, they had access to this. Another important thing that we see here as people of the covenant is that God had given them instructions on how to live as a community in covenant with each other. So not only were they in covenant with God, but God wanted them to take care of each other. And so you find in the Old Testament scriptures how God tells them to take care of the orphans, uh, the, the poor, the needy, the widowed, how, uh, how they needed to treat them in a special way and to take care of their needs and to make provision for their needs. And so he was trying to establish not only a covenant community among the people. So not only were they in covenant with God, but because they were people of covenant, they had a sense of covenant relationship with others in their community. And uh, uh, as part of this, God also promised them victory over their enemies. If they walked in covenant with God and they walked together in that solid relationship as a community, then they would prevail over their enemies. Joshua says this in Joshua chapter 23, verses 9 and 10. He says, The Lord has driven out from before you great and strong nations. But as for you, no one has been able to stand against you to this day. One man of you shall chase a thousand. For the Lord your God is he who fights for you as he promised you. So Joshua said, you know, we've stayed together. And as we moved together, God was with us and no, no enemy could stop us. And he said, God has been with us in such a manner that one of us could put a thousand to flight. And that's what they experienced as they walked in covenant with God and as a community. And uh, 
we see how one man tapped into this. David, uh, he was just a shepherd boy. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, at that time in 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, uh, he was a great uh, army of uh, uh, the Israel soldiers, the soldiers of Israel, and they had forgotten their covenant with God. But here comes an ordinary shepherd boy, and he realizes that he is in covenant with God, and he goes out to face Goliath. On what basis did David go out to face Goliath? When you look at 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, you look at verse 26, and again in verse 36, both times we find David calling the Philistine an uncircumcised Philistine. Why was he highlighting that? Why was he pointing that out? Uh, why did it even matter? He was saying, that giant does not have a covenant with God. I, being a shepherd boy, I have a covenant with God, and that makes all the difference. That changes the equation completely as far as David was concerned. He saw himself as somebody in covenant with God, and therefore, the Lord of hosts, as he says in verse 45, he says, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, Jehovah Sabaoth, the God who is the Lord of the armies of Israel, the, uh, of, uh, the, uh, the captain of the heavenly hosts, and he is also Jehovah, a covenant-keeping God. I come against this Philistine in the name of Jehovah Sabaoth, in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God who keeps covenant. And so that's what gave David boldness as he went against the giant because he was in covenant with God. And we see several other uh, blessings that they experienced as people of the covenant. And one of the things, uh, I'll be close with this, one of the things that we see in the Old Testament scripture is that the covenant and the blessings of the covenant that God gave to one generation, he wanted that handed down to the generations that come after them. In Deuteronomy 30 and verse 6, God says, The Lord will, your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. So God is saying, look, I will deal with you, but I'll also work with the, your children who come after you. The descendants who come after you, I will work in their life and in their generation. In Isaiah 59 and verse 21, God says, This is my covenant, my spirit that is upon you. And my words that are in, in your mouth will not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants' descendants, says the Lord of hosts. God is saying, what I'm giving to you will carry on as a legacy in the generations to come. So here's a quick highlight of, of how the everyday life of God's people was affected because they recognized that they were in covenant with God. They were a people of covenant. APC's Bible College and Ministry Training Center in Bangalore offers hands-on training and preparation for ministering in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit along with doctrinally sound study of God's Word. We believe in developing the whole person for ministry, emphasizing godly character that's deep-rooted in God's Word as well as showing powerful demonstrations of signs, wonders and miracles. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And we trust that what you've heard has encouraged you. You know, if the people under the old covenant had all these things working for them and God working in such a manner in their day-to-day -day lives, how much more should you and I as people in the new covenant expect and anticipate God's working and God's blessings in every aspect of our lives? We should, and we should have great expectations of God to work in our lives, in our day-to-day -day lives, because we are a people of covenant. Let's pray together. And I want to pray God's covenant blessings being released into your life, whether it's healing, whether it's deliverance, whether it's God's provision for your life. Just believe God with me right now that as we pray, things will change at your end. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that through Jesus Christ, we are in covenant with you. And Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I pray the covenant blessings of God over every individual, God, listening. 
Father, I pray that there's healing. Healing will manifest in their bodies right now. Deliverance will take place right now. That divine provision and protection and victory and triumph and blessing will manifest in their lives because they are the covenant blessings and we are a people in covenant with you. And I pray this over them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. Many young people seeking to be trained and equipped for Christian ministry desire an opportunity for hands-on involvement in ministry as well as interact, observe and work alongside mature ministers. All People's Church Bangalore is offering a paid two-year ministry intern program with the opportunity for full-time employment with All People's Church upon satisfactory completion. During this two-year ministry intern program, you will attend classes from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m serve in various areas of ministry with All People's Church in Bangalore. Interact with APC's pastors, staff and ministry leaders. Brochure with details about the ministry intern program and the ministry intern application form can be downloaded from apcwo.org slash ministry intern.